Hello and welcome everybody. We are super excited about the conversation today. It's being led by Beth Donovan. And for those of you that know Beth, that's awesome. For those of you who haven't met her, she has been on the team at the Center for Coaching Certification. Beth, how many years now? Oh, um, since 2018. Yeah, so three years. Very excited to have her as part of the support team serving all of you and working with everybody. And she's got a phenomenal story. So best focus today, marketing from the heart, really comes out of, to me, her story. What I'm gonna do is stop my share so that Beth can take over and share the PowerPoint she has. Uh, and as she's doing that, I'll tell you a little more about Beth. She has been in a cohort and is working toward her PCC credential. So she's been doing the training hours and the mentor coaching and everything else. So very excited about that as well. Uh, Beth, this is all yours. Please uh, jump on in. Well, um, my story that Kathy was referring to is... Um, Oh, about 2006, 2008, somewhere in there. I can't even remember. It seems like a lifetime ago. I weighed 460 pounds and I decided to change my life. So I did. And um, I lost weight and um, started moving again with the help of a doctor and um, some physical therapy and um, just revamp my life. And then I decided I wanted to help other people revamp their lives. So I came to the Center for Coaching Certification to learn how to do that. And um, then when I began marketing my coaching, um, I kind of created my own way of marketing. I started hearing from gurus and all sorts of people how to market myself, but I found a way to market myself that I thought was more authentic. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Fabulous. Oh, okay. We're all yours, Beth. Well, first, um, I want to ask you, what are the reasons that you became a coach or whatever you became that you want to market? And do you want people responding live, typing in the chat box, yeah. combination? Um, you can respond in the chat box and um, that way we don't have a bunch of people talking over each other. Although it'd be fun to hear from a couple of them live. Yeah, it would. That, uh, feels like people are typing. <laughs> so, hmm. my gosh, everybody that's typed in so far. Uh, to help people. I love helping people. I love the chance to help people, to help others. Um, they, everybody became a coach to help others. So what it sounds like to me, if I'm correct, uh, would I be right in saying that you're all very altruistic, that I'm understanding you all have a very big heart and you're out to help other people with whatever problem you seem to have expertise with. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's accurate for me. Okay. Okay. Well, um, when you remember the reason that you became what you became, 
how does that make you feel about helping the person when they first come to you? I guess, I think, type, type or respond live? Um, either one would be fine. It, typing's fun to hear from everyone so we get all the voices in the room. A couple of people coming in live really brings the conversation forward. So let's let's get some voices in the room. I feel like... Um... I'm excited about the opportunity because I know that the people that I'm coaching have the answers and I feel a sense of responsibility to help draw that out. So one of the reasons I became a coach is because I was helped by a coach and really saw the value in, in just helping me uncover what I already knew. And so I feel, I feel a you know, a sense of responsibility and really excited about the possibilities for each person. There was a place I once worked um, on a technical help desk and my manager had a sign on his door that I still remember. And it said simply, I am here to help. It is what I do. Oh, I like that. And I've, I've tried to adopt that as something of a philosophy. I am here to help. It is what I do. And there's nothing more rewarding than when you start with a client and they have just a, a, a sense of maybe some anxiety or frustration, or they just feel limited. They feel boxed in. And to think what happens through the coaching process and the, the, the joy you see on their face when they realize I've discovered something and you've helped me with this, but it's within them. They, it, it's within them and you've helped them draw it out. And it's just, it, it's so fun and rewarding and exhilarating to just see people go through the process of overcoming something. I just love that. Yeah. It, it, Phil, it makes me think about, um, the whole affirmation story that we learn about in the CPC training. Uh, and I think about uh, my personal mission statement for years has been people. So I'm right on the same page with all of you when you say helping people. And then the irony comes up, most of us want to help other people, but do other people really want to be helped? <laughs> you know, that term of, oh, I need help, you know, it's somehow limiting to them. And so the idea uh, that we say in coaching of partnering with them and then, yeah, the aha moments or you get the call or the text or the email from a client, I did this, you know, whatever the success was. And it just makes your, your day, your week, whatever. Yeah. I noticed that when I began living out loud and posting what I was doing with my life, I represented myself and my coaching business by sharing and not selling. There was a very big difference. I didn't have to push any products or push any coaching. I was sharing and that whole concept of sharing and building trust. Um, when a client buys coaching or buys a product or buys anything, they buy into a relationship and they buy you. They don't really buy the product. Um, they buy a lot more, they buy a relationship and they come back and you get a chance to build a further relationship with that client and they come back and you get a chance to further the relationship with the client and build more trust, more authenticity. Um, 
that's what I've noticed. And it's through sharing that you do that, not through selling and pushing. How do you guys feel about that? Well, I, I love your slide, your slide saying it out loud um, because it's really easy when people feel uh, either um, threatened or they don't know who they really are. They want to hide and living out loud is essentially saying, I'm going to live my life visibly and be vulnerable with other people. And when you have a passion, you, you cannot fabricate or, um, you know, uh, falsely come up with passion. You either have passion or you don't. And pe if people know your passion and they see your passion, um, it, it attracts people. And they, they say, yeah, I, I, like you said, Beth, it's a relationship. So for you to say, live out loud, I just love that. Because what you're saying is I'm putting myself out there and I'm being vulnerable with what I've gone through and I'm living that story out loud for you. So I think that's awesome. I love that. And also, if you look at the PCC markers, I don't know how far along with coaching a lot of you are, but one of the things that we're supposed to show is vulnerability. And living out loud shows our vulnerability. And by sharing, uh, we also get to ask questions. And building a relationship shows curiosity. And that's another one of the PCC markers. I remember when I used to be on uh, the national circuit as a speaker trainer and I had to get everybody's attention and get their interest and get them involved. And I did it by sharing a story uh, about getting recruited to run a, a small company and I show up to start working and I start learning everything I wish I'd known before <laughs> I started there. Um, I found out that of the 12 direct reports I had, only two of them had been there longer than six months. One because they didn't speak English and one because they wanted the job I got hired for everybody else, it was just this constant rotation. And the reason for that was that the owner of the company used to just scream and yell at people. And so the turnover was super, super high. So when I'm doing a class on management or on communication or on conflict, and I can share that story of getting recruited into this company and going, oh my, what do I do? <laughs> kind of thing and, and making the mistakes and then learning and learning that, okay, I can't change the owner of the company. I can set boundaries. I can change interactions with other people. And by focusing there, building it and having the success. So by sharing my own mistakes and challenges it built this credibility that I knew what I was talking about and that I had something to offer them for the rest of the day doing that training or that workshop. And I feel like it's the same thing. I'm looking at Lisa's question in the chat box. How do you apply it? Um, looking at best image here, here she's sharing. Okay, this is me and this is me. Look at the difference and how profound that is. And somebody sees that and says, okay, that's Beth being vulnerable. That's Beth being Beth. And she's sharing, this is what I came from. And here's where I'm at. And you look at that and you go, oh my gosh, I want to go from this to this. This is somebody who's done it. They can help me do it. I felt very vulnerable sharing my before pictures. And I've shared some that I'm very, um, I used to tear up all of my old pictures and my husband saved some, let's just put it that way. And I'm glad he saved some, but I've used them to help people appreciate more body love. Um, some of them are really embarrassing for me to put up, but I do it and it does give a lot of vulnerability out there. Um, be authentic 
um, there are thousands of coaches in our niches. Clients will hire the coach that they click with. And marketing from the heart is about creating that click with prospective clients. How can you create a click? in your particular niche? I think it goes back to what Kathy was about, sharing a story, uh, you know, being a, you know, real person and sharing your experience as just a human. And that connection, I think, is what may click with some people. And I don't think you are going to click with everyone, and that's the point. But yeah. those stories yeah. are absolutely the way to do that. And I think also asking for others and asking questions about other people as well, showing an interest. I oh, agree. Um, it's like in coaching where we're asking and not telling. It's always important to establish a rapport with people and and you do that I've learned there's a couple of ways to do that but mostly it's asking questions and authentically listening really listening to what they have to say and then repeat it back in your own words to make sure of two things one is that you understood and also to communicate to whoever you're speaking with so they know you understood because if I know somebody has understood stood me I am more likely to be friendly with them and, and to really start to work with them. That's a very good point. Be heartfelt. Create a list of heartfelt actions that we perform that click with people. Example, listening actively, like Andy was just talking about, and asking questions in general, com gen genuine conversations. Just a short list, because we're running short on time. Do you want them to be able to go into a breakout room and have that conversation? Um, since we're running so short on time, maybe just in the chat room. Okay. And what are we coming up with, Kathy? Uh, so in the chat box, we're getting, um, well, one comment was actually in there before. I just think it's worth sharing, Lauren. Uh, when you market authentically, it helps your clients get better results because they trust you from following you prior to hiring you as their coach. Um, so in terms of responses to this one, confidence, uh, I think showing empathy through active listening and reflecting back, showing empathy and understanding, uh, making sure the other person feels heard and understood, focus on and attentiveness to the person, empathy and willing to listen. Those are all great answers. Now create a list of heartfelt attributes. Example would be curiosity, kind of like when we listen and repeat back or ask another question. I think people are thinking of words they want to type into the chat box for this one. I like your word curiosity. I think um, 
a real interest in others. What else? Joy, compassion. I think if we take the calm off the of passion, passion right there is good too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compassion and passion. Yeah, matching energies, authentic interest, uh, enthusiasm. Those are all really good. being authentic and motivating and inspiring. Ooh, I love inspiring. And how will you be authentic and heartfelt? And how will you share is what I want you to think about as you leave. Those are things that will help you in your marketing. And I want to thank you. And for a free 30 minute session with me, contact me. And that is my email address and my web address. And I have a contact form on my web address. And I'll be glad to help you as far as um, marketing from the heart and I, I really yeah. like that question of how will you share? I'm curious what some of the ideas are for that. How are you going to demonstrate being authentic and heartfelt when you're marketing? So we talked about just sharing the pictures as one example. What's another way you can do that? I know one way that I personally have done it is to um, actually help people um, in, in their time of dire need. Um, you know, maybe I don't solve their whole problem or anything like that, but, you know, I, I give them a place to start or, um, you know, just give them a little sample of what you can do for them to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, several people are typing in the stories, telling the story. I, I like those notes, make it real and make it common, like people can relate to it. Um, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Uh, Lisa's asking platforms for doing that. And I feel like, yeah. So, and each one is a little different. Instagram is more about the pictures. Uh, Facebook, it's a combination. It's pictures and actually writing something and, and doing the story. LinkedIn is more just the story. Uh, so depending on what you're communicating, different platforms make a difference. Who's there makes a difference. And blogging is always a, a platform that I've loved. And podcasting, huh? Oh, yeah, podcasting. We have a fantastic podcast here at the Center for Coaching Certification. And there's so many podcasts and radio shows and, you know, live streaming TV and having the opportunity to be interviewed uh, because that way, instead of having to have your own podcast where you have to do it every week, you can find ways of reaching out to people who have podcasts and becoming a guest on theirs. We love having guest podcasts. We love having guest webinars. We love having guest blogs. And it's a way to start sharing and sharing your story and getting yourself out there. Uh, on, and what's really nice about it is when you're on somebody else's platform, you're reaching their audience in addition to your own.
So I'm curious, what are, what are the big takeaways for everybody here? Uh, Phil, Phil's asking, yeah, we have a podcast. I'm not sure who else. Who else, who else here does podcasting? Lisa does. Okay. Delitha wants to. No. There are podcasting groups on Facebook and everywhere else if you look for them and they're looking for guests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the podcast groups on Facebook are great. I mean, just Google podcast guest and you'll find lots of groups that are looking for guests to be on their shows. Um, I have a podcast. I, I'm a guest on a lot of podcasts. It just hasn't translated into business for me. And I'm very open about sharing my challenges and my story. And, you know, there's just something about leveraging it from getting out there, showing my expertise, sharing my story and getting people to connect. It's been really, really challenging. You know what comes up for me, Lisa, is the whole concept of get back in my speaking training days, how you presented it at the front of the room. And so what happens is you say, okay, here's the challenge. And back to what somebody said earlier, making it something common that people relate to. So I think about who's your ideal client? What are the challenges they commonly face? Then when you're sharing, you share an example, whether it's you or somebody you've worked with having that challenge. And then the human side, you know, here's the mistake. Here's, you know, here's what I was experiencing, the, that authentic piece. Here's what I learned. Here's what happened. And here's the outcome of it. With the outcome being that transition from being in that place that everybody's facing that similar challenge to the success uh, as a result of whatever you did. When you do that, you're giving them some insight into how they can do that themselves. They can create that shift from being in the place of challenge to being in the place of success. And you're also limited on time. So it's a matter of, and if you want more, mm. here's how you can get more. Um, maybe you remember the analogy, like if you go into the ice cream store and you ask for a little taste, they give you a tiny little taste on a tiny little spoon. If they hand it you the whole cone, you're not going to buy the cone anymore. Yeah. You want to give people a taste without giving away the store. And so it's that fine line balancing, giving them something to mm -hmm. show, Hey, there's more here. And then inviting them to come get more. Very cool. Thank you. Other thoughts and takeaways? Phil, uh, out loud communicates visibility and vulnerability. Nice. Other type takeaways from the conversation, everybody? I'm sorry, Kelly, Renee, I didn't hear that. Maybe type it in the chat box because I only heard it partially or a whisper. So I wasn't clear. Uh, okay, thanks for that note, Andrew. Uh, let's see, being vulnerable while it may feel awkward or risky is absolutely necessary to relationship and success in building. Nice. Good, good. Good ideas to think about changes for your business and Facebook group for new success. Fabulous. Beth, those are some good takeaways. I'd like to add one more takeaway. Um, asking questions is is always good. Like when you make a post 
always ask a question. Um, don't leave it at just, you know, here's a fact. Um, ask a question. Um, get some feedback. Draw people out. Um, that really helps in your groups. Back to that curiosity. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. So you all have contact information for Beth. If there are additional questions, please feel free to get those out. Uh, and it sounds like we're complete otherwise. Is that, is that a fair understanding, Beth? That's what I understand. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.